So you've got yourself a snake plant, just like this one. Now what are you supposed to do with it? How are you supposed to take care of it? We're going to talk about that in this video. Hey guys, it's Joe here with another video from Hermit Garden. In this video we're going to talk about snake plants. So this is a snake plant that I got from one of my aunt and uncles. They gave it to us as a house gift when we moved into this new place. So there's actually a whole bunch of different species of snake plants. The one that I have here I actually wrote down the Latin name for it. It's called Sansevieria trifasciata laurentii. I had to write that one down. But this is probably the type of snake plant that's the most common. Uh, you'll see that it has these long leaves that look like snakes. They're pretty rigid. If you just kind of flick them, they don't really like fall over or anything. And a lot of them will have this uh, really cool yellow stripe along the sides. And that's kind of what I like about these snake plants. So snake plants are a type of succulent. So what that means is it doesn't really need that much water. For the most part, it will be good just on its own, very minimal watering. You just need to water it once in a while whenever you feel the soil is uh, pretty dry. But other than that, they're, they'll do pretty well at room temperatures. Ideally, they're best placed around a south or east facing window where they can get a decent amount of sunlight. I would recommend not placing this directly in the sun. It's pretty easy for plants to get too much sunlight and actually get sunburnt, or as I like to call it. But generally, overall, they're a very low maintenance plant that doesn't require too much work on your end to keep happy. And that's kind of another plus about snake plants. Their natural habitats are from the are from western Nigeria in the tropical regions to the eastern Congo area in Africa. And so they're kind of more used to those uh, higher temperature climates where there might not be too much humidity and rainfall. Another plus to having snake plants is that they have a pretty long lifespan. So you can expect your snake plant to last you maybe one or two decades even. Even with just minimal care, basic care, nothing, not doing anything too special. Typically you'll see them grow to about four feet tall when they've been growing for a few years. The one that I have here is, I think it's just a couple feet tall. You might have heard that snake plants are able to filter out the air, remove toxins from the air. So NASA actually did a study on that. It turns out it does filter air, but it's probably not enough to make a significant difference. You'll probably have to fill a room full of these snake plants to have any meaningful effect on the air filtering. So I wouldn't place too much emphasis on the air filtering effects of these snake plants. I just kind of like them for the aesthetic mostly. So one thing to note about snake plants is it is going to be toxic to your pets. So like you definitely don't want any dogs or cats nibbling on the on these leaves because that can actually uh, be toxic to them. You don't want your pets to be eating any plants if you're not, if you haven't verified that it's pet safe. So they actually don't grow all that fast, but if they if you do want them to grow a little bit faster, you might want to place them in a spot with more sunlight, maybe a little bit closer to the window, but not too close. Generally for plants, if you give them more sunlight, that's when they're going to give they're going to have more energy to perform photosynthesis to invest resources in growing taller. But you probably shouldn't expect them to grow to like five feet tall within just a few years or anything like that. So in my experience, I've seen snake plants grow about maybe an inch or two within a few months. So if we do a little math here, let's see. So an inch or two every few months, that's about like four or five inches every year. If we extrapolate that, it might take like five or 10 years to even grow a foot or two. So it's a pretty long amount of time to be waiting for your plants to grow. It's a pretty slow growing plant. So don't worry too much if your plant isn't growing as fast as you'd like. So let's talk a little bit about the watering. So like I said before, snake plants don't need too much water. As long as you're kind of feeling the soil once in a while and you'll notice that it's super dry on the top, that's when you can tell that it needs water. The other way you can tell is if the plant actually feels uh, pretty light. So you can just lift it up, check the weight, and just see if it's actually uh, a little bit lighter than when you last watered it. So if you got your snake plant from a gardening store, most likely they'll come in a pot like, a pot like this. 
and there should be an inner pot that you can actually take out that will allow you to do your watering. So just like this, this came right out of the pot that I just showed you. So I'm gonna change scenes really quick and I'm gonna show you how to water your snake plant. Let me first start out by telling you how you can check your snake plant needs some water. So one thing you can do is you just stick your finger into the soil here and you just wanna check if it feels dry. So I'm sticking my finger in here. Um, you could probably stick up to your first knuckle and just see how it feels. I think this snake plant definitely needs some water. It's feeling very dry and it's been a while since I last watered it. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can water your snake plant. So you're just gonna take it out of uh, its pot here. And at the bottom of the pot, there should be some drainage holes so that excess water comes out. You're just gonna take some water. Preferably, you're gonna use filtered water like this. This water filter for drinking works perfectly fine for this. Tap water might work fine, but you may want to avoid giving your plants chlorine for best results. So you're gonna take your plant here and you're just gonna pour water until you see water started to drip out of the bottom of the grow pot. So you just wanna put a little bit of a at a time. You just wanna make sure you're not giving it too much water. So I'm just kind of going all around here. Okay, there we go. So we're seeing water start to come out from the bottom. Just trying to make sure that all the soil is getting a little something. So you just wanna pour a little bit of water. And when you notice that water starts to drip out of the bottom, that's when you kind of know that water's made its way all the way through the soil and your plant has plenty of water to last it for a while. I think that'll be it for this watering session. I'm gonna put it back into its spot. And if you notice that the soil is super hard, really stuck together, you might wanna take a second to just kind of break it up, massage it a little bit, um, and that'll kind of make sure that the water is, um, is actually being absorbed by the soil and it's not just kind of like flowing over as if it were like a solid piece of rock. So you could just take your finger and break it up a little bit. You could also use chopsticks. Either one of those will work. You just wanna break it up so that water gets absorbed into the soil. And it also helps aerate it in case it hasn't been uh, broken up in a while. But that's it for this video. If you learned something new, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next in the next video. Bye.